everybody, I'm here to share with you some more books that I have read, reviews for you, and recommendations. So let's get started with this video. First of all, I really want to stress that maybe I have a stack of books here and Right now, I don't know what my uploading schedule is, just based on um, the fact that internet is scarce right now as we recover from an earthquake and everybody needs help all over town. We're not getting um, service as quick as we used to. So, you know, maybe I have a, a stack of books that I review here for you and maybe it's only been a couple days since you saw the last video. Well, again, because I just don't... Um, I don't have a good uploading schedule right now that plays a part of it another part that another piece that plays a part in the puzzle is there's another one <laughs> simple fact is that I have off to the side three or four books going on right now I generally have some kind of classic I have some kind of read aloud I have some kind of growth and development and um, just more fun and as those finish up of course the stack builds um, that doesn't mean I sit down and read one in the course of, you know, a day or two. And so that's how this works. So as I'm sharing with you, I just wanted you to kind of have a more realistic look at that. I have done a video, actually I've done two videos, one on how to start reading out loud to your children, um, a second one about the reluctant reader, and then a third one, how I make time to read. And I will leave all three of those leaves left link down below for you and I'm just gonna pull up and go from here I don't really have um, a particular order as of finishing so the first one I'm sharing with you is surviving the apple whites by Stephanie S. Tolan again in my quest to read Newberry winners and honors um, this one came up this one I think was 2002 um, yes and this tells the story of an eccentric family in North Carolina that homeschool and then you have your uh, street punk kind of kid who has been kicked out of schools is finally accused of setting fire to the school uh, the, the last school that he was at you find out later that it wasn't completely accurate that's not the full story and basically going to this family's the Apple Whites Apple Whites I kept saying Applegate for a while Apple Whites homeschool is basically his last resort before Juvie Hall this kid is everything that a parent dreams her kids won't be. Um, he cusses, he smokes, he is just um, an angry kid that wants the persona of being the bad boy kind of thing. So starting this book off with that in mind, there's language in here. And then you have your eldest girl who we only know as Edie. And she is very structured um, with all of her family dynamics. She really wants a good education. She really wants um, to be taken seriously. The family is kind of unschooling type of thing. And she, is, she wants her education to be taken seriously. So with those two things opening up the story, I was... I was very much on guard. Um, honestly, I hate it when um, contemporary books kind of make homeschooling look not to be taken seriously, that there needs to be um, more government involvement to make sure things like that happen or to make sure that more structure happens. Um, and I know there's been um, memoirs and autobiographies coming out about those that really weren't taught well. I get it, I understand it, but the those of us that work really hard for our education end up paying for the mistake of others because of stuff like that. Okay, so that was a problem, and then the whole bad boy thing was a problem. I'm just like, okay, is this really a book that I want my kids to read? Well, into the book, there are some hysterical moments, um, and again, you've got this girl that really just wants uh, her education to be taken seriously. I am shutting... There it is. Sorry. You just have this girl that really wants to be taken seriously. She is not the creative one of the family. And the family kind of has this dynamic of yelling at each other. It's, it's just not a pleasant atmosphere. 
However, in about halfway through, um, the father who is, you know, wants everybody to be creative and etc. etc. He gets a job putting on the Sound of Music play. He is a director. That is what he does best. And through that play becomes a building of the family. So they kind of take more of their education a little bit more seriously. They're researching maybe stuff on Austria. Um, Jake ends up playing Rolf from Sound of Music. And the cast of characters is it's hysterical okay um just how they come up with everything it was brilliant it even made me want to go and see this play it was awesome and i think what the author ended up doing is you know don't judge a person by its cover this poor boy has gone through so much and he tries to put on this facade of, of looking like this and acting like this um so people basically will just leave him alone and that is so prevalent preval prevalent prevalent yeah. Um, in today's world, you know, they have a look, a feel, an act, and it's basically to kind of hide the whole, you know, well, that's a teenager and they, they're just not good kids. And so, you know, you expect someone to act that way, of course they're going to act that way. And that's exactly what you have here. Um, but he really is more of a gentle soul that just kind of hides behind, um, trying to be tough man. Um, Edie is definitely a... A character that I resonated a lot with she likes things structured um, but it can and you know as as the author was portraying it as a strength it can end up being a weakness and you kind of got to see some of that the whole homeschooling thing again the author actually showed the positive and the negative so she balanced that out really well um, in the end I think it was a three-star read I liked it it wasn't okay I really did like it um, I was talking to my mother about it um, at Denny's, you know, how I was finishing up in, in this whole scene with The Sound of Music, and of course she's like, I remember reading that. Um, so I'm going to pass that on to her. Um, insofar as what age range, I would definitely say use your judgment with your children on this. I would have um, a child that would like to have the bad boy kind of look so that I don't really want to say bad boy, but the, anyway, he would be influenced by stuff like that, whereas my daughter could also be influenced by another section of that. And so you've got, a, if, if you have a child that tends to be swayed easily, this is where I'm going, you have a child that tends to be swayed easily, this might not be the book right now. Um, I would definitely add it maybe later years um, um, when they're more comfortable with who they are as a person and um yeah i don't know if i can go much further than that definitely use judgment in use in in assigning that book or letting your kids read that book again there is language and there is um smoking and attitudes and the whole the mother and father are just kind of flighty um and you know how that really irritates me so there is that Okay, another book that I did finish is Mrs. Houdini by Victoria Kelly. This is not a book that I would have normally finished. I would have been done about halfway through, but the author did a very good job in um, wanting or in giving a good story that you kind of want to read. The reason I kind of was ready to set it aside is because there is a lot of spiritualism in here. There is a lot of uh, the whole half of the book is after Houdini is dead and Bess what is her, what Bess, I think it's just Bess Houdini um, Bess is trying to communicate with him bef you know in the afterlife he hasn't crossed over I'm not sure I'm getting all that right honestly my eyes just kind of glazed over that um, but basically she doesn't believe he is dead. She believes he's trying to communicate with her and it's up to her to kind of figure out how that is. The first half basically kind of talks about their marriage relationship and things like that. Now, this is Mrs. Houdini. This is her story. Um, the author found a newspaper clipping, I believe, that talked about how Bess had this, um, in 
infatuation or or um, drive to to communicate with her husband, not believing he was truly dead, and that's how the story came about through that, through research and things like that. And this is what I had wanted to read um, in this book, but I think it was more just about the spiritualism and and things of that. And then the the first half of Bess's story is she's a Catholic and she married Houdini, who was a Jew. She's ousted by her family and Houdini basically kind of worshipped his mother. So there is that coming together. And it was, again, it was, it was, what is it? I feel like I'm tripping on my words. It was interesting, but there was just enough that it was okay. I think I gave it two stars. It was okay. Um, or maybe 2.5. I think it might have been a 2.5. I don't remember. The the things that really bothered me is the spiritualism. According to my faith, we have to be careful in, in things like that. There was language in here. There was sexual content that I just tried to go over it. Some of it I missed and unfortunately I really didn't like that. Um, would I recommend this book? I can't. I can't recommend it. Um, there's just some things in here that I know many people um, would have a problem with. So um, I cannot recommend it. But I will say that it was intriguing and I did want to read more. Um, mainly because one of the reasons that she finds that he is communicating with her um, is through photographs. And I don't think I am um, ruining any thing with that and so because of that um, how that came about I wish somebody would have written a separate story and kind of like a time travel type of story that would have been very fascinating to me just how she worked all those things um, I found that fascinating um, so Mrs. Houdini was okay okay um, and then I finished Becoming Mrs. Lewis by Patty Callahan um, I had um, great hopes for this one it wasn't bad. I really want to stress that. I did, you know, really work on a good Goodreads review, and I will try to leave that link down below specifically for this one. Um, because there was some... Um, the thing I took away most from this is this is a... Sorry. This is a book about her journey becoming a Christian woman. Um, she... I, I stress that because at the beginning she just knows that there is a God. She has gone from being a Jew to an atheist to a communist and then um, at a really dark place in her life um, she accepts that there is a God and then throughout the rest of the story you have her basically coming to know him. That being said it, it, it isn't a it isn't an immediate transformation it kind of puts me in mind of like stepping heaven words where you don't necessarily have a character you like but you see a progression and you begin to like that person I don't think I put it as eloquently as that in my review but that's what I was trying to get at so um, if you're expecting a mrs. Lewis 1950s docile meek and gentle woman that's not um, joy at all. That wasn't joy at all. Um, she had married a divorced man and that marriage was a failure. It was dark. It was bleak. It was nasty. And she ended up watching him have an affair, ended up divorcing him, trying to rebuild her life in England. And so there is a lot of that. This is published by Thomas Nelson. This is another issue I did have with the book. There is some foul language in here, which Thomas Nelson was recently, within the last couple of years, bought out by a secular publishing company. Thomas Nelson was strictly Christian for a long time, but they have been bought out, or they sold out, I'm not sure how you want to look at that, uh, to a secular publishing company. A lot of readers and authors are noticing that a lot of Christ, solid Christian doc, doctrine, for lack of a better word, that's not really what I'm trying to get at, but God has been removed. There maybe is like a vague mention of something within fiction stories by Nelson now, um, but the deepness 
of Christian faith has been removed. I, you're not really going to be able to do that with C.S. Lewis, who is uh, a main figure within the Christian dogmatic world or apologetics world. And so um, there wasn't any of that removed in here. I, as a matter of fact, what I had in here was very solid. Uh, for the most part, there were some things that I vehemently disagree with. Um, but there was some foul language, which if you are a Christian publisher, I do not think that you should allow that at all. That is something that has been there for established for a while and has a reputation for, and I do not think um, that should be broken at all. Regardless of my feelings of reading um, the, the language or not, it was very um, mild, but I know that there's going to be some people that are very... Um, upset at that. Let's see, what else is there? Um, some of the things that I really, really liked, I have some really good solid notes. Um, she has, trying to get it to focus, she has a emotional attachment to C.S. Lewis. He's being very standoffish and it has to do with um, her being divorced and allow the Church of England allowing that or not allowing that and um, so there's there's several times in there where I had red flags going up I'm like you are still married or this or that um, but again as I as I go through this you see her progress until a point where it, it clicks with her and it's like okay you finally get it and then um, I hope all that makes sense. I feel like I'm rambling right now, but basically in the end it was, it was okay. It wasn't, um, it was her story. And so I don't really want, um, to give my review based on her story. I mean, you can't really, how, how do you review a book on what is there? Um, so the review I'm giving in the author, and I read the authors afterwards, how she really researched and tried to come up with um, an accurate biography. There were some things that I disagreed with how she approached some things, um, but that is more my personal thing. I can't believe this is, I'm talking so long. I apologize. So that is the review I have for Becoming Mrs. Lewis. Um, it's not one that I will keep. I don't even think I would read it again. The stuff that I really liked was C.S. Lewis's solidity on scripture and taking feeling away from truth and sticking to what is true despite what we feel. And those were the, the main things that I took away. And so far as what we have done for our Read Aloud, this is Thimble Summer by Elizabeth Enright who is one of our favorite authors over here at our household. Elizabeth N. Wright did Gone Away Lake, which I have previously reviewed for you, and, and she also wrote The Melindy Children, which I am constantly talking to you about. Temple Summer, this is the first time that I ever remember reading it and telling, my, telling the story to my children. We read it in a few days, again, just with no internet and things like that. Uh, the, the stories were kind of coming out quickly and this is a short weed and a short read and it's thimble summer which means we had to read it before the summer is over that being said whoo all right um so the only thing that I did not like with this book is Elizabeth Enright's constant use of the word this fat person this person was fat and everything she seemed to describe about this person was fat 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 and it wasn't in like a, this is a villain, he's fat, or anything like that. It just was constant. It was a constant descriptive word within it, and I was done. I was done with it. The, the thing about this is, and I really want to distress this with the kids, is this is a simpler time. So, you know, she jumps into a truck with somebody that she never knows, and the truck gives her a ride to a big town. You cannot do that today. So, in, this, in the whimsical story, it happened, and that's what we kind of talk about. This is a whimsical story 
of a young girl who really um, gets the chance to do some amazing adventures that we cannot do today. Um, you definitely have a lot of Elizabeth Enright's um, like signature within her books of balancing out uh, family and adventure and um, troubles and all of that type of thing and it was really really enjoyable I think we gave it three or four stars we liked it okay the last one I'm going to share with you at this long video is giant pumpkin sweet this is the second time I've been reading this and it's my daughter's first time this is by Mel Melanie Hauser Hill. I'm assuming that's Hauser. H E U I S E R. This, um, again, it's the second time reading this. This is a library book, so there's the glare. It is one of my favorites. It's an amazing living book, in my opinion. There is one word in here. Um, the music teacher is going to describe the, um, what Rose calls the Professor Higgins. Um, she uses a donkey terminology to describe him. So, I found one. This is the story of Rose, who is a very type A personality, young girl, very tall, kind of going through a growth spurt. She's very self-conscious of that. She puts her heart and soul into her cello and her routines and her strict living all the way up into being treated seriously by um, pulling her hair in a tight bun. Now she has this um, goal to become or to win a cello competition, a box cello competition and study under the professor's I don't know what his name is. It was like Professor, uh, professor Howells. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure it's some foreign name. And again, she's very obsessed with numbers. So you have that background for her. You have her twin brother who is shorter and more adventurous than she is. And their next door neighbor, um, that ha that's how the story opens up. The next door neighbor has an accident and he's all about, I need you to guys to take care of this project. He's broken bones everywhere. And the project is to um, water and take care of this pumpkin plant. And this huge pumpkin is going to basically be this, this big summer project. And it ends up being a huge part of the story as well as her cello. Now there's an accident that happens and that's all I'm gonna say and it kind of changes life for Rose and her type A. The other type A thing is she will read every third week um, Charlotte's Web because she knows what to expect and it's that important to her. She has a tap dancing best friend who is a sister of twin boys and this book is just jam packed full of fascinating information. The, the author really put um, a living education within these pages. You're going to learn a lot about gardening. You're going to learn about music and composing and you're going to learn about how the cello works and how um, different, many, many, many different musicals. That's the word I'm trying to think of. You're going to have many musicals in here, which I grew up musical. Uh, my family, we all did musicals. So um, there's a lot in here that I, I knew immediately what the reference was to. And so this um, just is a fantastic delight and I'm so glad my daughter's reading it because I just want to talk with her about it. So that is going to be the stack that I'm sharing with you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's long and I'm not sure how much I can cut out, but there you go. There is a good stack for you to kind of just see what we're reading, see what's going on, any recommendations I have, like I totally recommend this one. Um, Maybe for the older groups, like 12 and up, um, Thimble Summer, perfect for everybody. Um, those that love, um, like the woman side of great men, that one, again, if, um, don't read it expecting a meek and quiet person, meh, and use with caution. There we go. All right. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have another cup of coffee or tea and read another chapter. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.